Hello, in this video I will show you how to use an ESP32 as a small web server that displays data from a sensor, in this case temperature. The ESP32 is connected to a Wi-Fi network and acts as a server for a simple web page that, that shows the current time and temperature. From any device on the same network I can access this data using a simple link in web browser. I know I should have talked about this much earlier, but I usually focused on displays and ESP32 boards that already have built-in screens. This time, however, I decided to show you step-by-step step how this works uh, through six examples. And the best part is that you don't need an expensive ESP32 board with built-in AMOLED display. For this project, literally any ESP32 board will work. I'm currently using this WaveShare board, which costs less than $10, but I could just as easily use this one, which costs uh, less than $5. Feel free to use whatever board you like. What is great about projects like this is that you don't have to deal with display libraries or other complex peripherals. All the examples I prepared, which you can find in uh, the video description, will work in Arduino IDE without any additional libraries or special setups. I prepared six examples that, uh, that will work even if you don't have the temperature sensor I'm using. The first four examples displays only the time, so you can uh, better understand what is happening behind the scenes. Later we will add temperature using this cheap I2C temperature sensor, the BMP 180. You can find different versions of this sensor and I'm using this older version from company Soldered. You can also use any other temperature sensor, just don't forget to make the necessary changes in the functions that handles temperature readings. So let's get started. First example. In the first example we only connect the board to the internet and print the current time in a serial monitor. So we can confirm that Wi-Fi and time synchronization are working before we continue. So this code is very simple. You will need to set your SSID and password. This is my temporarily <laughs> hotspot on the, my phone. And here you will need to set your time zone and don't forget to choose your correct board i'm using esp32 s3 board and don't forget to choose your port and to see something in serial monitor you will need set these two enabled and we can upload this example it is uploading And now I will enter the serial monitor and I can see that my Wi-Fi is connected and time is shown. Now I can go to example 2. In the second example, the ESP32 acts as real HTTP web server. And after the program starts, the serial monitor shows the board IP address. When we enter the, that address in a web browser, we can see the time displayed on web page. My time zone, which is UTC plus one, plus one so 3600 seconds offset. And this is HTTP code which will be run in browser. In loop function we will just handle client, our PC or our I don't know phone and here will here we will connect to Wi-Fi get time and set data to server. It is uploading and now we can go to serial monitor and I can see that my ESP32 has IP address 
this one I will copy that and now we'll go to the browser I will just paste that and here is our result so now we can see our time in browser on any device that is in our local network using this IP address but problem is that every time board reboots it will have another it will have different IP address and that is sold solved by example 3 because in example in third example we replaced uh, the IP address with, with human readable name by using the MDNS library so we will have local domain name server and we will um, access the ESP using simple local domain instead of numbers and in my case that local domain will be this my home dot local this is HTML which will be sent to browser and code is even simple simpler And after third example is compiled, I'll be just copy this and in browser I will paste this my home.local. And now we have same results but with nice name. But here you can also notice that the page is refreshing every second so so in fourth example instead of refreshing the entire web page every second we use smooth javascript update using these two commands and esp32 code remains exactly the same the only change change is this html um, where JavaScript periodically requests new data and updates the page without re reloading it. I will not run this example because it, it is practically same uh, and this, um, this video is already too long. So we will move to example 5. In that example we added temperature sensor and in this part you will need to install your first library here which is Adafruit BMP if you are want if you want to use same uh, sensor like me like I said if you want to use some other sensor please make your changes here the rest will be leave same also in this example uh, we we created nicer user interface so page looks nicer but you can see there is lots of CSS code so now it's more complex let's try to upload it and after uploading I can return to my browser and now we have temperature and much nicer UI or not UI <laughs> it looks much nicer and final example is six example where we added pressure and much 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 nicer look looks 
but also this part is more complex. Let's see how it looks in browser. And our final example is here. We polished the design and add pressure. Atmospheric pressure sensor because the BMP100 is primary, uh, primarily uh, atmospheric pressure sensor, but it also provides temperature readings which makes makes it perfect for this kind of project. At this point our project looks quite professional and I know what you think. To build something like this you probably need to be really good at CSS, uh, JavaScript or HTML. And yes, the, the part that the browser reads and turns into a web page does look complex. But now you actually have a very good <laughs> reason to learn it. CSS. CSS. CSS or JavaScript. And I'll be completely honest with you, I'm not good at CSS, JavaScript or HTML. Myself, most of the code you see here is was generated with the help of ChatGPT which is amazing tool when it comes to CSS, HTML and JavaScript. JavaScript. That's it for this video. If you found, found it useful, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps the video reach a wider audience. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more projects like this. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, you can buy me a coffee on a coffee page become a Patreon supporter or simply say thanks using YouTube thanks feature. Enjoy the rest of the year. Enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs> Bye.